This time on Trollerman. In the hunt for Haddock, two trawlers risk collision on treacherous seas. While skipper Sandy Watt struggles to catch enough fish to pay his long suffering crew. Some trawlers hunt in pairs. The twin trawlers Starlight and Starlight Rays are heading north from Peterhead towards the Shetlands. By doubling up and stretching their nets between them, pair trawlers like these can save on fuel and catch more fish. But with 12 men to pay, they need to catch a lot. What they're looking for is high-value fish, like haddock and whiting. All they've caught is coli, a low-value fish. It's a worry for the skipper of Starlight Rays, James Thors. I suppose I am disappointed at what I've got at home. But I can't let it get to me yet, because this is part and parcel of the job. And we've got to keep searching. It's a big sea, but it's not all fish. If the pair trawlers continue to catch coal, the skippers and their crews are in trouble. hundred miles south is the fruitful harvest, a rarity in the Peterhead fleet, a wooden fishing boat. It's more than 30 years old. Skipper Sandy Watt has been a fisherman since he was 16. He follows in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. Is it not here, Not here. Oh, that's Sandy has managed to find Haddock. The problem is that at this time of the year, there isn't much, and it's very small. Get some in it. He's struggling to scratch a living from the boat he's owned for nearly 20 years. Probably been attached to this, this vessel so long now. I mean, my goodness, I came aboard here in 1989. <laughs> There's just an attachment, and it's it's... This is just your second home. In fact, you spend more time here than you do in your house. There's a relaxed mood on board the fruitful harvest. No Saturday night about you. Know where I'm gonna be. The fishing may not be good, but this morning, the crew have other things on their mind. Everything's okay, under control. We have eggs. Beans, bologna, and we have cheese sandwich and smoked sausage. You wouldn't ducks like think you would eat all that with a with a stomach that size. <laughs> you eat too much of this hey, bacon, bolognese and sausages, <laughs> everything fried, no good. No, I'll have a cup of black coffee, that'll do me. As you can see, I'm watching my figure. <laughs> I absolutely love the job, but I probably should have replaced the vessel um, a few years ago. Well, probably ten years ago, but without having a son coming behind me, I just felt maybe the times is actually overtaken us now, so we'll just have to stick with what we've got further till we uh, we hang up our boots. Working together, the pair trawlers take it in turns to shoot their nets. James, skipper of Starlight Rays, goes first. His opposite number on the Starlight is Alec Baird. He's hit a problem. 
we've come fast on the uh, the, the net stopped, obviously in, a, in an obstacle in the boat and mark, uh, stuck in. The net's being towed by both boats, but it's the section nearest Alec that's caught fast. It's down to him to fix it. The skippers find the spot directly above where the gear is snagged on the sea bottom. Alec has to wind and rewind the winch to try and free the nets down below. On fruitful harvest, they've got the same problem. Their nets are stuck on the seabed for the second time today. Sandy Watt and his crewman, John Duncan Campbell, are struggling with their winch too. Could you search a wee bit of merger and start about side? But this is the second time we've come fast in the seabed, so... Okay. So we're not the best pleased just now, to say the very least. And we'll have to move out of this area. This is... This is just absolutely hopeless. Serge are a wee bit of mere, John Lee. I'm just quite annoyed with myself. This is just one of the better areas, and you think, well, if we go down here, we'll maybe get the same type of hauls we got in the morning. I can't believe I've done it, but well, well. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> On the pair trawlers, the nets have finally been sprung from the seabed. Net seems to have jumped, so we're going to take the net back up, check it, check that the, the net's not torn. <laughs> We won't mend it correctly, we'll just lace it together so we can get the net short again. The way the net's torn, if we can get enough strength in it to keep it together. Because if he's not able to get enough strength when she goes out the water, she'll just burst open again. Repairs to the nets have to be good. Dragged constantly over the rocky seabed, it's all too easy to lose a precious catch. The fruitful harvest has freed its nets. Oh yeah. Well, she's just jumped. She's just jumped. Excellent. Probably spoiled the hole, but uh, at least we've managed to get clear of the seabed, or whatever. Eighteen-year-old John Duncan Campbell is the youngest crewman. He's learning the ropes from Skipper Sandy. John's a rarity now. But I mean, when I started to see, he was surrounded by guys. He was surrounded by Jones. But he seems to have an old head and young shoulders. And he comes from a fishing background and he's, he's getting loads of help along the way, so it's, um, he'll have no problem making a grid whatsoever. He takes a lot of time to tell me, tell me things, is it? He, 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 he's wanting me to learn up again. He just, he just takes a lot of time to tell me, he explains, he explains to me what's happening and, and he tries to learn me up as best he can. Again. After two days at sea, the pair trawlers still haven't made enough money to pay the crew, let alone make a profit. Instead of catching Coley, they need to track down the elusive haddock and whiting. Someone else pleased with the catch is the first mate, James's son, Scott. Nice hurric in there, white in. No, no, eh, no bully, so better for the crew, for the crew's morale. 
I don't think you can actually beat a good fish. Good Scottish Cuts fish. And this is for the crew. We're all great fish lovers here. Cooking. It's a good pastime. It uh, makes my, takes my mind off of the pressures up here. Finding fish. The right fish is the skipper's job. But his decisions affect the mood of all the crew. The wheelhouse can be a lonely place. There's sometimes I would far rather be down there than here. I, I, I'm not taking that away, away from my crew because I think they're marvellous. Behind every good skipper is a good crew. And it doesn't matter how good you think you are up here, if you haven't got a good crew to do things, you're, you're useless. It's 6.30 in the morning. Time for Fruitful Harvest's first haul. Sandy's anxious for a good start to the day, but he'll catch nothing until the crew can bring the tail boy back on board. One end of the net is attached to the tail boy. If they fail to retrieve it, the net will stay on the sea bottom. Hooking the boy demands precise coordination between John in the stern and Sandy in the wheelhouse. Well, the conditions is very windy at the minute and, and we're just going to try and uh, get this tail boy on board the boat. So needless to say, we're now facing in the sun. Can't see the tail boy, but can see the sun and we're not looking good, and we're wondering what the skipper's planning if we miss this one. John has just one chance to throw the hook each time that Sandy passes the boy. Hey, get something I say! Clear, Bill! You've got a swell coming towards you. Oh, there's a glare of the sun. Listen to the screams if they miss it. <laughs> oh, dear. John's persistence pays off. Good time as well. Uh, oh. Hallelujah. Oh. That's a joy. The joys of the job. That's all I'm about forgetting about how we dry. Look at the gas. A lot, of the, a lot of the skippers long ago used to shout and scream, so he's, a, he's an old school skipper, Sandy, there. On the pair trawlers, the lucky streak has run out, and they can't find enough haddock. It's Coley that's been filling the nets again. With every haul, the skippers are hoping against hope their luck will change. Alex hauling his net. Don't see no sign of the code end yet. I'm just waiting to see if uh, there's any fish to shoot back on. The last thing the crew need is more coli. What they want is haddock. Alec casts an anxious eye over the hall. Disaster. Mostly coley. There's so much coley this time that Alex's crew can't even handle it all. He has to send some over to the sister ship, Starlight Rays. All 
Coley markets for a quarter of the price of haddock. Worse still, the legal quotas don't allow them to catch much of it. For James, the economics don't make sense. He feels there's no alternative but to dump much of the fish back into the sea, dead. That's, that's devastating for us. This is the same in the job. I'll never be able to handle it. I'll go out here to catch fish. Throw in a buck to me is a sad thing because everyone stayed. Everyone went to the sea with them. I just can't see any sense in this way. On board the fruitful harvest, there are signs that things are about to get worse. There's just an unbelievable swell, and it is very, very, very uncomfortable. I mean, this is, well, as you can see, you have to hold on. You can't, you can't let go with one hand without catching hold with the other, when it's just absolutely murder. This is what I like to call a hands and knee job, because most of the day, you're crawling about in your hands and knees. <laughs> oh. Oh. It just makes you wonder at times why we do this. Eh? Just in the anticipation that we might get some fish from a hole. The amount of swell that you've got today, if you get if you get a pile of wind the back of that tomorrow, it'll be un unbelievably rough. I mean, you think this is bad. <laughs> A big swell usually means stormy weather to follow. Sandy will either have to brave the coming storms or take the boat back home half full. No, that's just there. Uh, that's, that's no use. It's uh, just a typical haul for this time of year. Um, maybe get two or three boxes. I feel a wee bit green inside. I hope, I'm hoping it stays inside. The bad weather's reached the pair trawlers, but their crews are still working. They'll be lucky to get three hours sleep tonight. James will shoot his net and he'll go to bed and I'll stay up and vice versa, with our net, James is up. There's always one of the skippers up at, at any one given time. Good. It's nearly midnight. Starlight Rays shoots her nets. James is taking a risk. He's going back to the spot where he snagged his nets before. It's the sort of rough seabed that the best quality haddock love. If his nets hold out, this could be a big payday for the crew. By four in the morning, They'll know if James made the right decision. Over late becoming cyclonic, four or five, occasionally six in northeast Cromarty. Occasional rain, moderate or good, occasionally poor. Ooh, that's not a good forecast. Seven to severe gale nine, perhaps storm ten. <sighs> la, 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 la. Hello, boys. <laughs> there's bad news and that's very bad news. Mm. But, the bad news first. Well, the bad news is, Xander, we haven't got enough fish to go home with. And uh, the very bad news is, the ship in Forgest is 79, easterly. Uh, well. So, 
I've tried my best and I really think we'll have to head into Peterhead tonight because uh, that fork is just a bit much for us. We'll just hold this on board and uh, make for home. Oh, failed again. Right on, boys. Ah, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Plenty of death. Always next week. <laughs> this is probably the worst job in the world. I, if, if you didn't like doing it, you, you just couldn't do it. Like, it would just be. You wouldn't get a worse job. Like, if you didn't like doing it. Four hours after shooting the nets, the crew of the Starlight Rays are about to haul in. James is about to find out if his gamble of fishing over the same grounds has paid off. Jagged seabed was too much for the nets. They're in shreds. Well, we're in a bit of a state just now, really, because this is where the fish are escaping from. Yeah, because our stones rattled down the bag here and made holes all the way down. Lost everything. Lost everything. I've lost everything. Cut in, bog, fish, everything. I like him. Four, four thousand pounds worth of weight. The only fish left in the ruined nets is Coley, known to the fishermen as Black. Old Blackfish, just when we dumped the last hole. No use. We're very surprised he's doing back just now. The hole before was all black, and he's doing back over the same well, the same ground, back the same way. Very surprised at that. Watch, grab. Oh. With heavy storms approaching, Sandy has put the safety of his crew first and decided to return to port. They've been at sea just three days. All right there, John. John, spear a boy for all right there. The weather can blow as much as it likes now. We're not really caring. You would think it's impossible for it to be a, a rubbish day tomorrow. It's, the harbour's just like glass. <laughs> you'll go home tonight and you'll be sent yourself. 
Well, have I made a blunder? Well, have I made a... this? This will go in all night. But if you get up tomorrow morning and it's a gale of wind, you're absolutely chuffed. <laughs> Safe in Peterhead, Sandy is landing 80 boxes of fish, just half his target for the trip. The night's not over for James and his crew on Starlight Rays. With their own net destroyed, their only option is to take another from Starlight. Stern to stern, and just meters from each other in heavy seas, it's a delicate operation for the skippers. The problem is here if you, the two boats collide, most steel ships, there's a lot, a lot of damage can be done. I haven't collided with this boat yet. See if I can give the crew some sleep. We're gonna have to get a bit wearisome now. Sorry for the crew working so hard and, and up your fuck and working for nothing just now. There's no profit yet. All the money is to go for the expenses to start with. The next morning in Peter Head. It's clear that Sandy made the right decision. Fruitful Harvest has brought meager pickings from the sea this time. But they'll have to live with that until the weather and the fishing improve. The pair trawlers rode out both the weather and their bad luck. Five days later, they landed a record catch at Peterhead. For skippers and crew, the trip was finally a success. Next time on Trollerman, the largest boat in the Scottish fleet sets out on her maiden voyage. And skipper James Buchan takes the renown to fish in a place called the Graveyard.